So what we're going to do today is continue on with um, the systematic approach to material to, to facilities design. And I want to take a step back to look at the um, concept that we have here in front of us, that what facilities de design is sort of consists of. So we've talked about the location. So you can see in that um, the bottom corner there, we talked about the location here. Um, and then also now we're going to really be shifting to the facilities design itself. And underneath there, there's three sections. The systems design, which is the, um, the actual makings of the building mostly, and then the layout design, which is how things are put into it, and then the last thing is the material handling. But we're going to be spending a lot of time here on the layout design. That's actually where we um, use a lot of the um, tools that we're going to be looking at. Um, so the systematic approach to, to um, facilities design, we, we went over this last time, and we were, we were really in this area of knowing the operations. Last time we talked about the problems um, and how to define the problems and exactly what's going on with the company. And now we're going to look at the next three steps, defining departments, defining the relationships, and the space requirements. In order to do that, we need to get a lot of background information and really just collect information about the company and what they're doing and where they're going. There's a lot of ways to do that. The first thing we want to be doing is looking at the context of the organization. Who, uh, who is this company? What are they doing? Where are they? Um, where where do they go? Where have they been? There's a lot of information you can just find online. There's public documents, annual reports, or websites. Almost all companies have websites. Competitors, products, specifically the suppliers and the customers. Who is it that is their customer would be something that would be really important for you. So looking at this concept of customer, I really want you to be thinking about who are they serving, so you can know then how to how to help them serve those people. We also want to look at the corporate values. So this is a little bit harder to get at, but when you go to the organization, you'll be able to sort of sense this. And this will be a very subtle thing, but I think it's going to be important for you to understand who this company is and who they and what they are, what they value. So think about the stories that they're telling you. You know, they might tell you some sort of, you know, how do they introduce their company? What do they say is important to them? And then really thinking about what are their asserted goals. Try to capture this. Try to capture this immediately after you go and visit them because that's going to be an important thing to know when you're starting keep, to keep in mind when you're starting to do all of the analysis. So I'm going to ask you for actually a narrative on this. And there's an assignment that's on, on Blackboard about how you're going to be really putting together some information about who this company is, sort of the background. The next thing, um, we talked about this a little bit last time, is we're going to be looking at um, knowing the operations through sort of the artifacts that the company has. Now, the company might not have some of these artifacts. These might be things that you need to create, but in most companies will have some of them. So the first one we're going to look at is time studies. And time studies, um, and you know how to do them. Um, you've done them before, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through an example just to refresh your memory, and then I will have you do one for a homework assignment. So a time study, the purpose of a time study is really to answer the question of how long does it take to make this item or do this process, whatever it is that you're studying. And there's really steps associated with it. So again, remembering that a lot of the time in engineering, we follow a bunch of steps. And the steps that we're going to be covering here are these steps. Where initially, the first thing you're going to do is really just study the operation. You need to watch what's going on. You cannot make a time study if you don't watch it. And that's one really important thing. Then you've got to divide the, op the thing that you're watching, the process you're walking, watching, divide it into elements. Elements are steps. Anybody remember what the steps of an element, how to define an element? Um, if you remember from 223, the way that you define an element, there's some, some sort of rules of thumb associated with that. Um, an element should be about between one second and ten seconds long. It can be up to a minute, but generally we want to have it in dividable so we can repeat the cycles quickly, and so they have to be really, really um, pretty short. But they don't want it to be too short, like something less than one or two seconds is going to be very difficult for you to time. Also, the other thing is you want it to be something where you can um, define where it begins and ends. I don't know if you remember watching the router video in 223, but there was a time when they said the element began when she grabbed the tool and the element ended when she let go of the item. 
or a bang, some sort of noise is a good time to define an element. So defining elements is in itself not an easy thing to do. So you have to study the operation and then define the elements, define the things you're going to be studying. <clears throat> then you time the operator for several, op for several cycles. Um, the number of cycles that you deci decide, if you remember that it's um, a good sample size is around 30. Um, mostly we don't get that many time studies. Mostly we um, really are sort of satisfied with 10 time studies. But if the cycles are very long, if they're like hours long, 10 cycles would be too many. So you have to try to balance the cost of watching it versus the, um, the information you're going to be getting. Try for 10, but if that doesn't work, then you just sort of scale back from then. Then the next thing you're going to do is to rate the operator. Um, well, actually, I'm going to, oops, did that wrong, sorry. Um, so this observed, this thing that you're doing when you time these cycles, this is called observed time. <clears throat> so you get the observed time for several cycles, for 10 cycles or something. And then generally what you do is you rate the operator during those, those cycles. Uh, sometimes the operator is going fast and sometimes they're going slow. I'm sure you probably remember from 223, watching those time studies, um, watching those rating videos where you watch somebody do something over and over again and you tried to get better at deciding how fast or how slow they were working. 100 is a typical rating. 120 is fast. 180 is, I mean, 80 is slow. So the higher the number, the faster, the lower, um, the slower. And so you rate the operator. A lot of times we just assume they're 100, but if you think they're moving tip tip particularly slow, then you want to assign them a slow value. Now there's way, reasons that, that people move slow or move fast. Uh, a particular operator might move slowly because he's thinking that he's being timed and then he'll be held to that time. So he might wanna go especially slow. That happens sometimes. Or even the other thing, the other side thing happens where people think they're being watched, think they're being evaluated right during that time and so they wanna go fast. And so you need to be careful and be sensitive to maybe how is this person actually working and, and take that into account in the, in the um, time study. Then what you do is you calculate normal time, where normal time is equal to the observed time times the rating divided by 100. Now, I don't know if you remember this equation, but it's pretty simple. It just adjusts that. Then you add allowances. And typical allowances, I don't know if you remember, but there's a place in your 223 book that has allowances as a percentage. Um, of the values and so like if there's you always add a certain say five percent for personal allowances I don't know if these are the right numbers but and then as the type of work gets more and more difficult you would then um, get add percentages like if it's a lot of heavy labor you would add more of an allowance if it's tedious work if it's fine work if it's standing um, if it's a noisy environment, all of those things will add the allowances. And there's ways to calculate what exactly that percentage allowance is. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take calculate the standard time. Now the standard time is the thing you want. It's going to be normal time plus one, one plus the allowance um, as a percentage or as, as a decimal. Um, so you'll be putting that in there and you're going to be increasing normal time by the percentage of the standard time. Now, um, there's a case study that I haven't introduced yet, which I actually should have, and I will probably do it at the beginning of the next video. But um, this is a this is a section of the case study, which is some um, time studies for certain of these four operations. And you can see that here we have the rating associated. This is the first time you, you they type they study this particular operation, which is a sanding operation. And they, they timed it as 0.23 minutes, and it was a 100 rating. Then the second time they did it, it was 0.45 and 90 ratings, etc. So they um, actually, oh no, that's not right. This is the second operation. This is the second time they did it, 90 at 0.24, 80 at 0.28. So they timed it um, five times. And then they timed this operation five times, and this operation five times, and this operation five times. So what I want you to do is calculate out um, the average of the normal times. So you're going to have to calculate the normal times, average of the normal times, the allowances, which I'm saying up here is 20%, and then give me what the, the standard minutes for each of these operations are. And that's what I'd like you to, to do right now. So I'm going to try to stop this video.